Well, good morning and praise God. We welcome each and every one of you that are tuning in by way of Facebook Live and later at 2 p.m. our YouTube channel, even as we welcome those that are here live in the sanctuary at Love Fellowship Church. I'm your host, Pastor Anthony Williams, and we're just so thankful. We're so grateful for each and every one of you tuning in on today. We believe by faith that God has a rhema word in store. And I believe by faith that if you would, amen, trust and press into the things of God, your life can change in this season. I believe it can change for the better. The Bible tells us that the blessings of the Lord make it rich and addeth no sorrow to it. Amen. The Bible also says that God wishes above all things that we be in, that we prosper and be in good health, even as our souls prosper. I don't know about you, but I want to prosper in this season. I don't know about you, but I want to be in good health in this season. And I'm telling you today, God's word never changes. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but the word of God will, amen, will, will last forever. So we we want you to tune in, not just uh, uh, listen uh, uh, loosely, but my God, get notebook, get pen, get paper, get your iPad out, get everything you need to take notes, and my God, get those hands lifted up in the air to praise and worship God. We believe by faith that God is able, my God, in this season to move and mighty and miraculous ways and we don't want anyone to miss out on the move of God in this season so at this time we want to invite uh, Elder Rob Walston and Minister Tammy Walston to come and minister unto us God bless you enjoy the services on today Lord we bless you we praise you God you are worthy of all the praise. You are worthy of all the glory. And we magnify your name on today, God. We give you glory. We honor you, Lord. You are great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Your name is worthy of all the praise. Your name is worthy of all the glory, God. And we honor you today, Lord God. We bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we give you glory. Hallelujah. You're worthy, God. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless you. We bless you. Thank you, God. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore. Every heart that is broken, great are you, Lord, is your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise, is your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you. We pour out our praise. This is your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. This is your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you all.
earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath. In our lungs, so we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your prayer. In our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you only. Oh Lord, only you. Oh, we bless you. We bless you. We bless you, Jesus. Your word.
just want to be with you. Come on and bless the name of Jesus. Come on and give him glory. Come on and magnify. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and glorify the king of glory. Hallelujah. Come on and shout a Shabbat his name. Hallelujah. He is God Almighty. Hallelujah. He is the great Hallelujah. I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. God. We give you glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, we just give you praise on today. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Thank you, God. We bless Hallelujah. you, we bless you, we bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You have rescued my life. You have rescued my life. And I'm never going back. Hallelujah, Jesus. You have rescued just give God all the glory. We give him all the honor. He is deserving of our praise on today, saints of God. Oh, he is the loving Savior. He's merciful. He's kind. He's a wonderful Savior. And he deserves all of our praise. He deserves the glory. He deserves the honor. And we just magnify him on today. Oh, we give, him, we give honor on today to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because our lives are nothing without him. And we just thank him just for who he is. <laughs> for he is the great I am. He is the almighty savior. And we just thank him on today. We give honor on today to our pastors. We thank God for the shepherds of this house. And we give them honor on today because they are worthy of honor. And we just thank even that each and every one of you that are here on today that decided that you didn't want to stay home, but you wanted to be a part of the service on today. And we thank all of you that are on Facebook Live that, you, that are watching on today. We just thank God. He's a great and awesome Savior. And we just glorify his holy and righteous name. So let us go before the throne of God. Hallelujah. 
Father, we just bless your name. We magnify you, Heavenly Father. For you are the great I am. You are an awesome Savior. You are King of kings and you are Lord of lords. And Father, we worship you on today, Heavenly Father. We worship you in spirit and in truth, Heavenly Father. And Holy Spirit, we invite you in this place. Have your way. Have your way. Move in this service on today. We pray even now, Father, that as the word goes forth, God, God, that my wife and I, God, that we would decrease, God. God, that you would increase, Heavenly Father, in our lives, Heavenly Father. Holy Spirit, speak through our lips. <laughs> speak through our lips of clay. Allow us to only say what you would have us to say unto your people on today. And we thank you. We magnify you. We glorify you. Because we realize that we are nothing without you. That we need you in every area of our lives and we thank you and we praise you on today in jesus name amen amen hallelujah well, welcome everyone hallelujah we're going to share on today as god has given us we're going to share it with you um, the title of our sermon topic if you need to have one is what does unity have to do with it amen all right, what does unity have to do with it? I've heard many conversations around with people saying, you know, I can get to the top. I don't need anybody. I can do it by myself. You know, there are some tasks that we can do by ourselves. There's some things we can do by ourselves. But there's sometimes we need someone to unify with us to be able to get to where God wants us to be. And so there are several occasions in the Bible that shows us just how important unity is to God and to his people. Not only that, the Bible gives us many examples on how to build unity and how to grow in unity as well as a result of what happens when unity shows up. Amen? Today we'll answer a couple of questions on what does unity have to do with it. Unity in Acts 2 was a prerequisite for the move of God in the upper room. Unity in the same chapter, hallelujah, was responsible for the many souls that came to know Christ in that region. We will show you today, by the power of God, by the ability of God, how unity can bring the presence of God, hallelujah, how unity fights the enemy, hallelujah, and it grows us up all in the same time, amen. So, let's look at what unity is, the meaning of unity. So the dictionary gives us a meaning of what unity is. And one of those meanings is, is the state of being united or joined as a whole. The state of being united or joined as a whole, meaning oneness, condition of harmony, being on one accord. Another meaning is being in harmony or one in the spirit. So it is a word of togetherness and oneness. So when a bride and a groom, they both light a single candle at the same time, which each of their candles, this is an example of unity. So this is unity from the dictionary standpoint. But what does the word of God say about unity? So in Psalms 133 and 1, it reads that it says how good and how pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. So it's important to God that we live together in unity. Genesis 2 and 24 says, therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. flesh. So there's the oneness again. See, my wife and I, we are an example of being one flesh. And that God desires us 
to be in unity, in harmony, on one accord with one another, especially in the body of Christ. We are to be on one accord. A spirit of oneness should be in the house of God. A spirit of unity should be in the house of God. There should not be any division because God desires unity in his house. Amen. Amen. So we're going to share several points with you all today. And I'll take point one. Hallelujah. It says unity brings the presence of God. I hear people all the time saying, I want God's presence. I want to know how it feels to be in God's presence. I want, to, I want that Shekinah glory. I want to shake. Amen. I want to have those experiences that everybody else has uh, when, they, when they talk about the presence of God. Well, I'm here to tell you today that it's for you. God's presence is for you. He wants you to come into his presence with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. He wants to inhabit your praises. He wants to spend time with you on today. Amen. And the, the scripture I'll be coming from is Acts 2, 1 through 3. And it's a familiar story in the Bible. And it started out talking about how the disciples and the people of God were in the upper room. And they were on one accord. Hallelujah. I'll read it to you right quick. It says, on the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven, like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames of tongue of fire appeared and settled on each of them, and every one present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues. Amen. As the Holy Spirit gave them the ability. I, amen. What I want, some points I want to bring out in the, the unity brings the presence of God. They were in a room and they were all, their hearts were all in one place. Their hearts, their minds were all in one place. It wasn't, um, I'm sitting here too long. I've been doing this for five years. I keep coming to the same place God told me to come and ain't nothing happened yet. None of that was taking place. They were all thinking about the presence of God. What I'm here to obey God. I want what God has for me. So I'm going to unify with what I see that lines up with God's word. And, and what happened to them, they received the promise. Now, if you're a Bible scholar, you know that back in the day they were talking. You know, there was word on the street. <laughs> I tell people all the time, the streets talk. There was word on the street that Jesus was coming. There was word on the street that the crucifixion had happened. And he said that he would, he would raise up in three days. You know, they were talking about him. And the disciples had spent all this time with him. And he told them, I'm going to send you a, prom a, a promise. I'm going to give you, I'm going to make you a promise. Because you've been steadfast, because you've been unmoved, I'm going to make you a promise. I'm going to give you a gift. I'm going to give you something that's going to help keep you in the time that's coming. Well, I'm not here physically. And they believed him. It wasn't a whole lot going on in the room. They just prayed. They all got together and they prayed. And because their hearts and their minds was on one thing, which was to receive the gift of God, the presence of God fell. So I want to tell you today that if you just get in a place, first you just repent. If you're not in that place where you can be in fellowship with God, Get into that place. Get into, get into his presence with thanksgiving. Sometimes when we're going through, we, it's hard to unify with God. I don't know about you. I'm just going to say from my perspective, sometimes I'm going through so much, it's hard to press in. I want to complain. I want to fuss. I want to fuss with people who don't have nothing to do with what I'm going through just because I'm in that place. But I can't say that I don't hear God calling me. I don't feel the pull in my spirit because I do. But what they determined is that it didn't matter what was going on outside because as the story goes on, there was other stuff going on outside of the upper room. But they all gathered together with one purpose and one mind, and that was to receive what God had for them. So what do you get? What are you doing when you come to church? What are you doing when you go home? And you say, I want, I want the presence of God. Unify with him through his word. Unify with him in prayer. Talk to him. He's ready. He's willing. I hear people say it. He don't hear from me. I'm not like such and such and such. Yes, he is. He's not a perspective of person. 
He wants to hear from you the same way you want to hear from him. He want to hear from me. He wants us to have his presence. It's not something he's holding back saying, mm-mm, they ain't tall enough, short enough, small enough, smile enough, joyful enough. He doesn't do that. All he says is he come and desire it. Clean yourself up. Repent. Get your heart right. And the presence of God will come. They weren't just there together. They were, their hearts and minds were clean. They were sanctified. They were holy. Their lifestyle was holy. And immediately because of that, the, the holy lifestyle, their one-heartedness, their willing to do what God, get what God had for them, put them in a perfect position for the presence of God. Amen? So if you have this unity and you're not experiencing the, pres- the presence of God, and well, if, you, if you're not experiencing the presence of God, check yourself. Find, do, ask yourself a couple of questions. Is there anywhere, anywhere in my life where there's disunity? Are, am I in relationships that don't agree with what God has for me? Am I in a job that's causing disunity and strife? It's not healthy for me. I can't get, I find myself thinking more about the job than I do about God. There's some, there's some signs of disunity there. If you come in the church and you, when you get through the door, you're like, oh my God, here I am again. And that's not God. This, this, that's a sign of disunity. I'm just going to get on the wall. I'm just going to sing this song. I'm just going to, just going to, that's a sign of disunity. Go back. Ask God where it happened. It's nothing wrong with repenting and say, God, help me. I want your presence. Because, see, you can't press to his presence with a whole bunch of stuff holding you down. It's hard. I can't, if I had five people on my back right now and I'm trying to get through that door, now I'm a thick girl all by myself, and I try to get through that door over there, we're going to have a hard time because that door wasn't meant for all five of us to go through at the same time. That's how we are sometimes. This unity have us pack on all this stuff that keeps us from the presence of God. So I want to leave with you. Don't just listen. Drop it. If it looked like this unity, if it's something that when you go to prayer and you can't get it off your mind, check it. Check. If you can't let it go, if that sister made you mad last Sunday, you still mad three Sundays later, hey, <laughs> this unity. Give that thing to God. Repent. And you will have his presence. Amen? Amen. So when we come into agreement with God's word, we become unified with him. So when our lines, li- when our lives line up with the guidelines for holy living, we are in unity with God. Now the thing about unity, when, when, when there is unity, that means you are not in control. A lot of us, we like to have our control. We don't like it when we feel like we ain't in control and we got to rely on somebody else. We don't like that feeling. But in order for the presence of God to come, you can't be in control. You have to allow the Holy Spirit to be in control. In, in control. When, when they, when, on that day of Pentecost, when they came together, they were not in control. And they were okay with that. They were okay with not being in control. They came with one mind, one purpose. They were in unity. Because they desired the presence of God. So when you desire the presence of God, there is no control. You are not in control. You are allowing the Holy Spirit to be in control. And that's what God wants for our lives. What what is he? He is to lead and guide and to direct our lives. That's what the Holy Spirit does. And when we don't allow him to do that, How can God's presence come? Because he is there. He is there to teach us. He is there to guide us. See, he is there to keep us from making the mistakes as we would when we desire to be in control. 
So allow the Holy Spirit to be in, your, in control of your life so that the presence of God can come. So when you go before the throne, when you go before the Father, when you give praise and worship to God, you want to feel the presence of God. Don't come with your own agenda. Even though you may have things on your heart that you want to tell the Lord that you don't understand, always come in a spirit of thanksgiving, giving thanks to God, saying, Lord, I love you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I give you the glory. Lord, I give you the honor. God, I realize I don't understand everything that is going on in my life, but God, I yet give you the praise. You invite the presence of God to come in. And that's when unity can, 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 can come because the Holy Spirit, see, you, you, you've invited him ha, to unite with you. And that's what God desires for us to unite with the Holy Spirit that he can have his way in our lives. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. That's good. We, too, can have an upper room experience. Amen? Amen. Our second point will be that unity helps us fight against the enemy. Hallelujah. And our example is going to be Joshua. And I know uh, many may know the story about uh, Joshua and the uh, wall of Jericho. Amen? But I want to pour out um, on you today this two scriptures in Joshua 6, 1 through 27. I'll be speak, um, reading Joshua 6 and 10 and Joshua uh, 6 and 16. Amen. And um, I just want to show you that God always has a plan for us. He always sets us up, hallelujah, for victory. But sometimes if we don't follow the instructions, sometimes if we choose to disunify, we can cause chaos or we can delay what God has for us. And, and, and then we don't get to get in his presence, you know, because we're running after, as my husband said, our own will, our own way. We have our own agenda. But see, the people of Israel, God had given Joshua um, some instructions. And he told them in Joshua 6 and, t 6 and 10, it said, do not shout, do not even talk. Joshua commanded not a single word from any of you until I tell you to shout. At that time, they were at the wall of Jericho, and God was giving Joshua instructions for the people on how they were going to take the land. And it was a lot of folks. You know, I know with just five people in the house, our house can't be quiet. When I tell my children to sit down, it's like World War III. That's, that's the opposite of sit down. It get really loud. But there was something God was trying to get to them. But they had to obey. They had to be willing to follow leadership and not have control that, of something that would take them eventually to the presence of God, the blessings of God, the place of God. Amen. But then later on, now they had to do that for seven days. They had to sit. Babies had to even sit still. The women had to nurse the children. They had to make them obey. Amen. But down in 16 it says, the seventh time around, as the priests sounded the long blast on their horns, Joshua commanded the people, shout, for the Lord has given you the town. Amen. So at the appointed time, God said, shout, and they obeyed, and they took the land. And if they had not, because see, the enemy was on the inside of the wall. They couldn't see him. They had sent spies to spy out the land, but they didn't know. They didn't have an accurate count of how many people were there, but they knew that their enemy was on the other side. But if they had not listened to God, they would have not gotten that victory. And that's what we're saying today, that, you know, when we obey God, when we choose to unify with the Holy Spirit that's on the inside of us, he leads and guides us and gives us direction and instruction, and he'll show you your enemies. 
He'll show you those people that are trying to pluck you out of God. He'll show you where people are plotting against you. He'll show you every snap, every trap, every snare that the enemy is setting for you. But if you're not unified with God, you'll walk right into the river <laughs> and not even see it there. But the Holy Spirit will tell you, go take a left. Take a right. It's a ditch down there. Don't go that way. But if you're disconnected, if you're not unified, how do you unify? I'm, I'm just getting saved. I don't really know God like that. Then find a church to get, to get in fellowship with people who know God so that you can grow and you can build your relationship in God. How do I fight the devil? Unify with the Holy Spirit. See what God is saying about your life. Get some instructions. Hallelujah. Get the Holy Ghost. He's not anything strange. It's a gift. It's a gift he gave to us to help unify us to him. Because the Bible says that no, no flesh could tarry in his presence. So we need his spirit. Because that's what God looks at when he sees us. He sees his spirit. His spirit on the inside of us. And when he, our spirit, the spirit of God is on the inside of us. And we go to God and he begins to say, oh, that's my child. She belonged to me. He belonged to me. Oh, let me see what they're talking about. Oh, they've been living holy. Hallelujah. They've been praising my name. Hallelujah. They stuck right now and they need me. And the Holy Spirit begins to stir up on the inside of you and say, oh, let me unify to God's will. Let me unify to where in position where he want me to be. Oh, it's time to change jobs. Let me unify because the Holy Spirit will begin to teach you how to fight the enemy. When people come up in your, into your space and they begin to speak death over you, the Holy Spirit will begin to tell you, speak life. Hallelujah. Cancel that. Hallelujah. That's not the truth. That's not God's word. The Holy Spirit that's unified in you because you've accepted him will help you fight. You don't have to go off on nobody. You ain't got to cuss nobody out. That's a trap. Don't cuss them out. That stuff get on you when you cuss them out. And then cause you to be disunified. But the Holy Spirit, the presence of God, unifying with the Spirit of God will help you fight against the enemy. You can't do this alone, sweetheart. Dear sir, you can't. Not in this world, not in the world to come. We need God. We need his presence. In our life, we need his presence in our home. The kids in this generation are acting out. They took it on, taking on another spirit. Hallelujah. And if we're not unified with God, we won't know how to fight for them. If we're not getting in God's presence. We won't know how to pray for them. We're in a pandemic. We need the presence of God in our home. I don't know about you all, but I see people gathering everywhere, doing everything. They ain't unified. Because if they unify with the Holy Spirit, it'll, say, <laughs> it'll tell them to obey the law of the land. If they unify, if they unify with the Holy Spirit, they'll be concerned about the people around them. So there are signs all over the place that there's disunity. But we have the power as the body of Christ, as the saved one of God, to unify, hallelujah, our nation, to unify our homes, to unify, hallelujah. Because Satan doesn't like when we unify. It makes him angry, hallelujah. He begin to see us and he see Christ and he get mad. So today, choose if you're going to unify with him so you can fight the enemy, amen? So when we are uni in unity with God and his word, we can hear the instructions. And through his spirit, we can obey him to overcome anything the enemy brings in our life. So if my wife and I, if we are always barking at one another, if we are always at one another, you always getting on my nerves. Uh -huh. I can't stand it. Uh -huh. You're always in my space. Uh -huh. You don't give me no time. As uh -uh. soon as I come in the door, it's yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm if we are always barking at one another, how is there going to be unity in our home? There can't be unity in our home. There's disunity. 
And the, and the, and the word of God says in James 3.16, it says, for, for where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. Satan wants you to have confusion in your life. He wants you to have confusion in your marriage. He wants you to have conf confusion in your home. He wants you to have confusion in the church. He wants you to have confusion uh, in, the, in your relationships. He wants that confusion so he can have control. See, if my wife and I, if we are always barking at each other at the house, what are we expecting from our kids, from our grandkids? What kind of example are we showing them? They're going to imitate what they see. And not only that, it's going to go to another level with them. So it's important that we stay unified, saints of God, in our households. Realizing, yeah, there are going to be times when, we, when we're not going to be in agreement with one another. But there is a way that you can still do it in a spirit of unity and there will not cause confusion. Because if you are not in agreement on a certain thing, just say, well, can we come back to this? Can, I, can we pray on it? And can we come back together? Until we come to some type of agreement. And you can agree to disagree. <laughs> you can agree to disagree. And leave it alone. But don't do things in front of your kids. That's going to cause disunity. When you have disagreements. Don't do it in front of your children. Go to a space where the both of you can talk and where the kids are not involved in the situations. Because you don't want to have disunity. You don't want to have disunity in your home. Because when there's disunity in the home, then you're going to have disunity in other, other places, in other areas, of your life and that's what not God does not desire that you're not gonna you're not gonna feel unified when you come to the house of God because you know things are not right in your own home when you come to the house of God there should be a peace there should be there should be a, 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 a peace in your heart that I'm coming to worship God on today. I'm coming to give him praise, glory, and honor. I'm coming to hear from God on today. See, when you are dis when there is disunity, when there is confusion, you can't come to the house of God with an expectation. Because your heart is already on what you've been dealing with. And that's what not, God does not desire that for your life. He desires harmony. <laughs> that when you step into the house of God, you are ready. You are ready to receive what he has for you. And every time we come into the house of God, that should be our desire. That God, I'm expecting something from you on today. I'm expecting your presence on today. And you know what? God, if you don't even do another thing for me, I'm just glad to be in the house in the presence of God. Because when there is unity, there's peace. You have peace. You have peace on your mind when you're, in, when you're unified and you don't allow the enemy to come in and disrupt and bring confusion, and bring that envy and strife. Amen. So let's stay unified so that the enemy cannot have a place in our life.
Amen. And that gets us to our third point. Hallelujah. Unity grows individuals as well as the body of Christ. So I want to I want to piggyback off of what my husband was talking about uh, about the I want to bring up um, just a, a slight view into the church. Amen. How important unity is uh, in individuals in the church. Amen. Still staying with unity grows individuals and the church. Um, sometimes we have um, situations at church or we may go to a particular church and we might not like the way a certain sister speak to me or we may not like a way a, a certain brother didn't speak, amen. And that, and because we're not mature enough in, in the body or as a person, we don't say, hey, is, have I offended you? Is, is everything okay, brother? You didn't speak to me today. You didn't get me every Sunday. You didn't speak today. You all right? No. You, you, I'm what not if, all right. And see, you don't give people opportunity to address what you're feeling. Amen? And that causes disunity. If I walk over to Sister So-and-So and I say, hey, you, you know, you might not have done, you might not have been on post or you may have approached me the wrong way. And I said, sis, you all right? You didn't, you just came kind of short to me today. That's not like you. You, you good? And they may tell me, I didn't even realize it. I didn't realize I addressed you that way. I was doing 15 different things because I like to work in the body of Christ and have a desire to serve. And I didn't realize that I was short with you. See, unity grows you up. Unity calls you to say, take accountability. What part did I play in this? Why does she feel that way? And if you go to a brother or a sister in the body of Christ and you say, hey, you know you got to come to them right now. You can't come with no attitude. Because you come with attitude, you're going to get attitude 90% of the time because we're all human. Amen? But if you have the spirit of God and you're unified with the Lord, you've been doing this all week. It's seven days in a week. You've been doing it on six. And seven is Sunday and you're ready. You come to church, you're ready to shout and praise God because you filled up with the spirit of the Lord. And then somebody rub you the wrong way when you get there. Do you leave the church? Do you get mad and stump out? You sit in church mad the whole service. Say it again, Tammy. You sit in the church mad the whole service because sister so-and-so sat in your chair. She don't usually sit on that row because you're texting your friend who's sitting behind you. I just want to address this today. You're texting your friend that's sitting behind you saying, she sat in my chair. Can you believe it? I don't like her hair anyway. That's disunity. Because unity is for you, not against you. Unity is for God, not against God. I don't want to hang with them because they, don't, they just don't do it for me. You don't have to hang with someone to be unified. It's called the spirit of love. I love you don't mean I got to be with you every day. Let me give it. I love you doesn't mean I have to be with you every day. Doesn't mean I have to reside in your space all the time. Unity, people always say, oh, it's seen, it's seen, it's seen. They look unified. They look like they just own the same accord. Looks can be deceiving. But as you grow up in God and you mature in, in the body of Christ, you got to learn, you have to learn that in unity, is also accountability. Means is you have a responsibility too if someone offends you to know how. And if you don't know how, then go to your leaders and learn how. How to correct a behavior. How to address an issue. There is no reason why so many people, and I'm addressing this because I hear it so much in the streets. And the streets is the body of Christ. And I hear it from believers. I left that church because they... I didn't like the way they took offering up. I left that church. I didn't like their praise team. I left, I left, I left, I left. And I said, well, what is God saying to you? Do you have the Holy Ghost? Well, what are you doing now? I don't want you to, I don't want you to not be with God because of a church. Surely. Because God said he wants us to unity. Unity grows individuals in the body of Christ. Unity grows us up. And I'm going to show you. It gives us gifts. 
it helps manifest the call of God in our life. So if, if we're out of the body of Christ and we're out here soloing and, being, and doing what we want to do, how, who is growing us up? How are we growing? Because ain't nobody feeding you. I'm just going to speak to those ones that like to stay at home and say, I get my church at the house. But who are you subject to? Who's pouring into your life? Who's speaking into you? Who's praying for you? Who's praying over you? Who's address, who are you being accountable to? Church is good at home, amen? Do you have a leader? Do you have someone, a shepherd? Someone who can help you get to where God have called you to be and align you, help align you into your purpose. Because we said already, unity grows you up. And I'm going to read this real quick. It says in Acts 2 and 17, In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will, dream, will, will see visions. And your old men will dream dreams. And in those days, I will pour out my spirit, even on my servant men and women alike, and they will prophesy. So that means a servant of the Lord. Church folks, he said he'll pour out his spirit. God pours out his spirit without measure. So if you're not, if you're not, if you're not growing, there's some disunity somewhere. That's a, that's, that is a bullet point for you. Where are areas in my life I'm not growing spiritually? God, how can I align my life to that? Do I need to talk to my, my leaders? Do I need to get some more teaching? Do I need to be taught how to hush? Do I need to be taught how to submit? God, how do I unify? How do I get from where I'm at right now, Lord, to where you will want me to be? Help me unify so that you can grow not just me, but the church. Amen. So in Acts chapter 2, uh, 38 through 41, it reads here, it says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of the Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other, and with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. So unity glorifies God, and it attracts unbelievers. So God-centered Humble-hearted unity glorifies God. So how does it glorify God? It glorifies God because it can only come through the cross of Christ. And it also glorifies God because it demands members of the body to die to self and to live a life empowered by the Spirit. So when Christ gets the glory Christ gets the glory for what he did once and for all on the cross. And the Holy Spirit gets the glory as he completes the work of Christ in, our, in, the, in the life of the believer. So Paul said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Paul allowed the Holy Spirit to complete the work of Christ in his life. And that's what God desires for us. That we allow the Holy Spirit to complete the work of Christ in our lives. Those areas in our lives that God is, that the Holy Spirit is tugging on us. Give that to me. Give that to me. See, when we give it to him, that completes another part in our life that he desired to give. And each time that the Holy Spirit is saying, give me this, give me this, give me this, give me this, we're working our way more to perfection. Amen. And that's what the Holy Spirit does. We don't, we don't have it all together. We're not perfect. But if we allow the Holy Spirit 
to show us those areas in our life that we need to give to him and we unify with him and allow him to do those things that he desires to do to do that spiritual surgery that he desires to do in our lives we're growing to perfection and we're becoming more and more and more like Christ that's what the Holy Spirit desires in our lives when we, when we become unified with him when we will truly become one with him, he will bring us to that perfected place in our lives. And in our last uh, point um, is unity in the body of Christ will grow the church daily. Amen. And I'll just read for you Acts 2, 46 and 47. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from the house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the church such as daily, such as should be saved. So unity adds to the church daily, daily. So when we grow up and we unify, God will bring what we're believing him for. The souls will come. Amen. Amen. So when we truly unify, as a body of believers, see, that becomes attractive. That becomes attractive. It becomes attractive when, when, when an unbeliever can see how you are unified as a body. Because when the, when the, when, when the, when the unbelievers see that you are standing for Christ and they see God moving in your life. They see God working in your life because you're in unity. That attracts the unbeliever because they see, what is it? What is it about you? I mean, it seems like everything you do is just blessed. Why is that? That's your opportunity to allow them to know that you have Christ in your life and they can receive that same loving Christ into their lives. So when they, when they came together and, and they were on one accord, they all came together in a spirit of unity. And God, he added to the body. He added to the church over 3,000 souls. So as we close, Ephesians 4 and 3, it states, Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. So, saints of God, it's important. Unity plays a major part in our lives. And when we stay unified through the bond of peace, we can see we as believers will be strengthened and we will draw unbelievers in because of God's power, love, and wisdom. Did you get anything out of the word on today? Amen. Well, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah.